This NHL season marks the 50th anniversary of a tragic day in Minnesota history. You still look at it as being something that's almost like a, a dream. It's a nightmare. 50 years after the death of Minnesota North Star Bill Masterton, we are able to pay tribute to him with film we've recently rediscovered. This is the only known film that exists from a game at the old Met Center when Masterton suffered fatal injuries in 1968. Only on five, Tom Hauser is in our archives with the Bill Masterton story. Five Eyewitness News has one of the most extensive news film archives anywhere in the country. As we continue to index and catalog this collection, it's making it easier for us to dig deep and find compelling pictures from our past to help us tell stories about people like Bill Masterton, perhaps the most famous hockey player you've never heard of. Bill Masterton was Canadian, but his story is an American tragedy. Just a superb gentleman, great family man, very good hockey player. Born in Manitoba, his heart ended up in Minnesota. Nobody expects a 29-year-old athlete, you know, to be just all of a sudden gone. After he thought his dream of playing in the NHL was over, he took a job with Honeywell and settled in the Twin Cities with his wife and two young children. Perseverance and sportsmanship and uh, dedication to the game, Th that was Bill. Those are among the reasons Bill Masterton was lured away from Honeywell at age 29 to become the first player ever signed by the Minnesota North Stars. He was a classy, talented hockey player. But three months later, Masterton would be at the center of the darkest day in NHL history. He hit him so hard. Uh, some of them, even some of the players, even thought he was out before he hit the ice. Masterton was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens out of college, but with just six NHL teams, he couldn't crack a lineup until the league expanded and the North Stars called. And my mother always told me he just couldn't turn it down. You know, she, she said, Carol, it's it's really my last shot at playing pro hockey, and I may only have a couple years, but I, I just have to do it. Masterton knew it was a gamble. The gamble started to pay off, though, when he scored the first goal in North Stars history in the team's first game. But then, the fateful day, January 13th, 1968. He passed the puck, and right as he let go of the puck, he got hit, good clean hit, by two players at the same time. And then he went down, and hit his head. Scott Masterton was three years old when his dad died from injuries suffered in this game. Oh, isn't that something? He'd never seen any film of his dad, number 19, playing for the North Stars until now. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Uh, what goes through your mind when you see something like 50 years later? Well, it, uh, it fleshes some things out a little bit, you know, makes them feel a little bit more real, you know. For the first time in 50 years, we've uncovered in our KSTP archives a portion of the final game of Masterton's life. Yeah, that's Billy right behind the net. That's amazing. Former North Star Lou Nanny was a teammate of Masterton's on the U.S. national team. It's probably, you know, within a shift or two of when he got the fatal hit. There is no recording of the fatal hit in the Oakland Seals game at Met Center in Bloomington, but now we can see some of Bill Masterton's final moments before being fatally injured. The fact that this exists is just remarkable. The fact that you found it. <laughs> we were... Uh, season ticket holders and uh, I don't think we missed a game. John Rendell was a close friend and former U.S. national teammate of Masterton's. He had just entered Met Center with his wife late in the first period. We noticed on the ice there was activity and we didn't realize it was Bill, but it was Bill being treated on the ice. Rendell immediately went to talk to Masterton's wife. She didn't think that it was life-threatening at that point and uh, but it was serious. You can't see anything else that comes even close to it. I mean, that was uh, so devastating. It wasn't too long after talking to the doctors that it was life-threatening. Rendell was at the hospital when Bill Masterton died 30 hours after his injuries. 
Like nearly all NHL players, Masterton didn't wear a helmet. At Met Center a week later, there were still few players wearing helmets, but it quickly spurred debate. Well, Coach, of course, the whole league and, in fact, the whole sports world has been saddened by Bill Masterton's death. What's been the reaction of your players to possibly wearing headgear? I think that uh, some of our players now are considering wearing it. It would be another 11 years before the NHL mandated helmets. Scott Masterton says his dad's death paved the way. I think that was kind of probably a hallmark moment in the NHL, maybe in sports in general. However, it didn't keep Bill Masterton's son from playing hockey. My mother never blinked when I said I wanted to play hockey. She was very much in the idea, this is a freak accident, and this is, you know, physical things are part of any sport. Tom Hauser reporting. Every year, the NHL gives the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy to the player who best exemplifies the qualities of perseverance, sportsmanship, and dedication to hockey. Masterton jerseys still hang in the Dallas Stars Arena and at Bloomington Ice Garden.